What's the word, y'all? Hey, congratulations to the Golden State Warriors. Six finals appearances in eight years is insane. I dropped a video a couple days ago talking about their dynasty and how fascinated I am with it. Nothing has really changed. I kind of knew that they was about to probably go out there and gain number five and put it away, and they did exactly that. So instead of us doing a recap of a game that you watched, I decided to deep dive into this Bleach Report article. It's called Every NBA Team's Dream Offseason Trade Target. Now, the reason I'm diving into this is, is because I saw one of the 30, and it was the Chicago Bulls. And it was Anthony Davis as a dream target this offseason. Like, oh, that's interesting. They must be thinking about it like a Zach Levine sign and trade, which I, I guess if we had to get rid of Zach Levine, as if, like he told the world, I want to go to LA. Getting back Anthony Davis don't seem that bad. I don't know why the Lakers would do that. But um, they didn't really, they, they, they put that as an option, but they had an option before that that was Vucevic and Patrick Williams. So uh, shout out to, to Bleach Report. Uh, I'm just I'm just curious to see what the other 29 teams dream offseason trade target is so that's Zach Buckley over here at Bleach Report um, Every NBA team's dream offseason trade target and I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that this is for the New York Knicks Because I feel like all the rumors are there for the New York Knicks and the uh, the Utah Jazz I'm not saying it's a realistic thing or that it will happen, but hey, he's from New York Mo Bamba's in his Instagram laughs saying, come home to New York. I'm just saying that would be a dream for them as a team Remember, this is their dream offseason trade target. First one is Ben Simmons with the Atlanta Hawks. Okay, that's interesting um, I thought it was gonna be something like Bradley Beal uh, there, there's a couple different ways the Atlanta Hawks, I think this is a very instant offseason for them. Uh, they could come back with basically the same core, but you saw what they got there. But they are a relatively young core. I know they got to the conference finals, but they were still a young team. Or they can like make some potential moves. They already got rid of Cam Reddish, which I thought would gonna be was going to be a part of an overarching bigger trade because Cam Reddish was a valuable piece. I'm sure there's other teams around the league that were interested in him. Um, but if you look at the young assets on their team, I can see them potentially going out there and trying to make a splash. You know, it might not be a superstar, but just changing it up. Ben Simmons makes sense. They needed some defensive help this year. It's basically Clint Capella and DeAndre Hunter versus the world. And say what you want about Ben Simmons. We don't know what version of Ben Simmons we're going to get once he finally is hooping there in Brooklyn or in this case, if he gets to the dream, yada, yada, yada. Um, he can still, he's got to defend regardless of what he's doing on the offensive side of the ball. I can understand if he did get traded hypothetically to the Atlanta Hawks of fans, just looking at that one clip of him passing up on that layup and be like, why are we trading for him and giving up assets for him? But the defense will still be there regardless of what his offensive role looks like. Malcolm Brogdon for the Boston Celtics. Okay. I don't really, hmm, I don't really think about this as a dream. You gotta think about that. We're talking about dream offseason acquisition. Malcolm Brogdon is interesting. If there's one hole in the Boston Celtics game, which is saying something, they're one game away from the finals. <laughs> Obviously, every team has holes, but they're, they've been okay. They've been okay plugging these holes because they're one game away from the finals. Is that they don't have a ton of people that are like really good ball handlers, right? Earlier in the Milwaukee versus Celtics series, we saw like the, the earliest games that the Bucks won. You saw like Drew Holiday picking people up full court. Uh, Pat Connaughton pick, pick, picking people up full court. Javon Carter when he was getting minutes. I don't know why he fell out of the rotation. They were picking up people full court and the Boston Celtics felt that pressure and they struggled. It's really just like Marcus Smart and Tatum as the two people that have legitimate ball handling ability. Malcolm Brogdon has that too. I like Mar uh, uh, Malcolm Brogdon because he's like kind of an old school guard in a sense that if you try to add some pressure to him, he gonna put the ball right here, his body between his defender. Like the way they teach it when you're seven years old, that's the way Malcolm Brogdon do it. And I'm saying it as a compliment. It's like Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson will ba uh, back you down from 94 feet to get that ball uh, past half court. And I guess Malcolm Brogdon can kind of do that. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert for the Brooklyn Nets. That's very interesting. I thought that their dream player would be more of a more of a wing just because the Brooklyn Nets this season was like it was KD. Nick Claxton, and then like a bunch of people that were 6'5 and, and, and smaller. It felt like they needed more big wings. Um, but Rudy Gobert makes sense too as far as def defensively, uh, his impact. I'm sure we're going to see Rudy Gobert more than one time here because say what you want about Rudy Gobert, whether you like him or you dislike him or whether you believe that he got played up the court, whatever the, the, the fake ass uh, narrative is. He's really good defensively. Even if that really good is just regular season for some reason, He's really good defensively. And I am a firm believer if we see a world where Rudy Gobert has a competent other four defenders with him or give, give him two other good defenders, you're going to see his value way more, way more. Could Brooklyn be that place? I don't really know. The straight up swap Simmons for Rudy Gobert. I'm sure Rudy Gobert is, I mean, uh, Simmons might be in a couple other ones as well, just because the idea of trading Ben Simmons is very interesting. Next, Charlotte Hornets, DeAndre Aiden, 100%. I ain't got to think too, tw twice about this. Everybody knows the Charlotte Hornets are looking for center play. This would literally be the dream. This is the best case scenario. Fits the timeline with LaMelo and Miles Bridges, bada boom, bada bam. And I mean, I may be in this world. How do they even make this happen? 
I know it's a dream, but there has to be some type of avenue to reach your goal, your dream. Um, hard to get assigned. I don't know. This is the one that I talked about in the intro. Um, and I just thought I just thought it was interesting. If the Bulls think they need more than a healthy version of Lonzo and Alex Caruso to contend, they can put together some prime. Prime trade assets. They talk about Nikola Vucevic to say prime trade assets. That, that, that was comedy to me. I also don't like the idea of having Lonzo, Alex Caruso, and Anthony Davis because all of those players feel like they're going to... Well, Alex Caruso is... I'm giving him a pass because this year is basically his first year being super injured. Um, but like Lonzo misses half the season every year. Anthony Davis is always nicked up. So I would hate, you know, be 10 games to the season and then now everybody's injured. But the other one is like orchestrating a sign and trade in case Zach Levine wants out. Whatever. Either way, Chicago can assemble... Can, assemble a formidable um offer i mean i would be interested hey if this is the package i'm somewhat interested i love patrick williams to death but i don't know what his ceiling is i think the optimistic bulls fans the super optimistic bulls fans look at him and see like Kawhi leonard or something i don't think we're gonna get that hopefully we do i mean i'm, I'm praying for it but it's it feels unrealistic because Kawhi leonard is such a robot and um i don't see a lot of that robotness robotiness and patrick williams cleveland gets gary trent jr flamethrower Actually, it's kind of interesting. Oh, okay, I forgot about Malcolm Brogdon. I was going to say every single one of these other people were like higher echelon, all-star caliber. I know DeAndre Aiden has never been an all-star, but all-star caliber players. And then they get Gary Trent Jr. But it makes sense, man. We talked about this about a month or two ago. Um, Gary Trent Jr. has one of the quickest triggers in all of basketball. He shoots the ball extremely well. And there's this was actually a rumor that they were interested in Gary Trent Jr. I don't know how you get him, pry him away from Toronto, because I feel like the fans of Toronto love him. The organization love him. And he's only like 24 so, some years old. I know he's on the last year of his deal. But I, I mean, unless he tells you, oh, I don't want to play in Toronto anymore. I don't see a world where you have to trade him because he's so good at what he does. Rudy Gobert, absolutely, absolutely love this for the Dallas Mavericks. I mean, if you watch them in their last series versus the, um, the Golden State Warriors, they needed some type of interior presence. And yes... They are one of the teams that kind of um, expose the weaknesses. Because, like, like, I love Rudy Gobert, and I think he's the, the most elite rim protector in all the basketball, but he's not the perfect defender. Um, the Dallas Mavericks expose some of the things that make him not the perfect defender. But if he was on the Dallas Mavericks, a lot of those things go away because they actually have perimeter defenders that are actually solid. He won't, he won't have to have to continue to rotate and rotate and rotate because everybody on the, on the perimeter sucks, you know? So I would love this for them. I don't know how you make it happen, but I... I I think this is a real possibility, low key. Jay Crowder for the Denver Nuggets. Everybody else is getting like even even like Gary Trent Jr. is a step ahead of Jay Crowder. I love me some Jay Crowder, man. He's he's one of those guys that you add to the team and immediately you're better. Um, but to have him here feels interesting. I mean, he can elevate you to help you make a, co a conference finals appearance sometimes. Some sometimes. I don't I don't hate it. I don't think too much about it. Detroit makes sense. Bring this boy back to the uh, Michigan area. Uh, 100 a dream place for for him. I think I think Detroit is a perfect place for him to blossom. Um, other than other than Charlotte, because I mean, you playing with Lamelo, <laughs> you feel I me? Mean? You gonna get a lot of opportunity playing with Lamelo because he's a prime passer. But I think Kay Cunningham and Miles Bridges together would be kind of dope. Um, so if there was one other team that I like Miles Bridges with, it's this team right here. Miles Turner for the Warriors, sure. I think Kevon Looney did great. I think Kevon Looney had, had a legitimate chance to winning the Magic Johnson Conference Finals Player of the Year. Conference Finals Performer of the Year, whatever it is. Conference Finals MVP. I think Kevon Looney had a real legitimate chance at that. Um, Miles Turner gives you a different look. But I think I mentioned this months ago when this was a rumor. I don't love the fit just because every single person on the on the Warriors team that plays, are they're so good at reading and reacting to what their teammates are doing. And we haven't really seen that version of Miles Turner throughout his career. Um, and, and it seems like the Warriors in those two years where they were struggling or hitting the, re not even the reset, where they were injured basically with their, some of their top dudes, um, they, they tried a couple different options. They tried Kelly Oubre and Kelly Oubre couldn't adapt to the read and react. So they shipped him off. They tried D'Angelo Russell, they shipped him off. I feel like Miles Turner will be one of those players that would not, maybe not struggle, but Kevon Looney is the better option offensively for the read and react. But I understand the idea of Miles Turner for sure as a rim protector that can stretch the floor. But I don't want his the ball in his hands as much as I like the ball in Kevon Looney's hands, you know? James Wiseman for the Houston Rockets. I mean, sure. Shout out to James Wiseman, man. Uh, conference or NBA champion appearance, for, championship appearance from him, even though he hasn't played. I mean, if I'm the Houston Rockets, for sure, why not take a flyer? It's not even really a, is it really a flyer? I don't know, bro. I don't know, bro. I don't know what the value of James Wiseman would be. We're only, he's only, you know, ended up his second season. And when he did play in the G earlier, he was all right, you know? Um, but yeah, if I was a team that is as young as the Houston Rockets or as young as like OKC, I'd be calling the Warriors like, hey, can we can we have a, a conversation about James Wiseman? Because I think there's some untapped potential, a lot of untapped potential. Indiana, this is kind of a cop-out. Sure, this is a cop-out answer draft ad sets. Uh, give me a give me a player. 
Ooh, they're talking about involve Russell Westbrook a trade to shed salary. Oh, we talked about this like a couple weeks ago. Cool. Next, Monte Morris. Hey, the Clippers, one of the biggest holes in the Clippers game is the like okay to below average point guard play. Reggie Jackson was up and down. He had some big shots for them this season for sure. Monte Morris protects the ball. I think Monte could be a starting point guard in this league, like legitimately a starting point guard. I know he played a lot of starting point guard because Jamal Murray was out, but I think like as a healthy team, I think he could be a starting point guard somewhere. And the Clippers might be that place, for real. Lakers, Buddy Heald. Uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> you had this trade. You had this trade, bro. It was right there. And you went with the Russell Westbrook trade and said, I ain't got nothing to say about this, dog. It was right there for the taking, but you went with the, the, the name. You went with the name instead of the player that probably fit the best for you. Memphis Grizzly Pascal Siakam. Now, that's interesting. As a, as a dream scenario, I love it. How the hell do you make it happen? I'm unsure. But as a dream scenario, having Pascal job, Desmond Bain, would make me a person that never missed a time that the Memphis Grizzlies were on TV. 1,000%. Would they even have an idea of how to even get there? A slew of draft assets and strong nucleus of up-and-comers that can sweeten the offer. I don't know, man. I don't know. Who, if you're the Raptors and you're like, oh, okay, Pascal is slightly older than our core players of OG and Scotty Barnes and blah, 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 blah. Who on that team do you want other than Desmond Bain? And they're not giving you Desmond Bain. So who on that team, you gonna take, you want Zaire Williams? Zaire Williams is really good. He's really good. I don't see it as actually happening, obviously. But I love the idea of this right here. Next one, Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal is up for like the biggest contract in the history of basketball this year. And I would stay away from that. I, hey, Bradley Beal can hoop his ass off. I'm not saying that he can't hoop or he's not, you know what I'm saying, qualified to have a lot of money. But I would, I would not pay this man the biggest contract in the history of basketball. No way. Anything close to it, I'm passing. Um, but hey, what you're seeing in Miami right now is that they struggle to score the ball. Bradley Beal scores the ball in the half court. Boom. Uh, what does that trade look like? Probably dealing with Tyler Hero, right? It might require sacrificing Tyler Hero to bring Bill to South Beach, but Bill is a type of offensive weapon Miami hopes Hero one day will become. Um, if the Heat hope to make a championship run with the 32-year-old Jimmy Butler, then trading tomorrow's potential for today's produ production is the route to take. I would agree with this. Um, the Miami Heat tried this season to bridge the gap between the two. They have the older guys, which is like P.J. Tucker, a 32-year-old. Uh, Jimmy Butler and 36-year-old Cal Lowry, and then you also got 25-ish-year-old Bam and the 20-whatever-year-old Tyler Hero to try to bridge it. It's hard, bro. It takes a very special group of guys like the Golden State Warriors to successfully do that. Um, and I would, I would sacrifice, if I was them, I think I'd sacrifice Tyler Hero to bring him in as long as I don't have to get his man the biggest contract in NBA history. I don't know. Uh, Kentavious Caldwell Pope for the Mil Milwaukee Bucks. I mean, okay. He shoots the ball. He plays good defense. Um, Damian Lillard. Whoa. Now, that would be interesting. Uh, what, are you, what are you asking? D'Angelo Russell? Like, how do you make this deal happen? They don't even say how you would even make this happen. I'm guessing that's something to do with D'Angelo Russell because of the money. Yeah, I don't know how you get this to work for that, that makes it good for the Portland Trailblazers. I'm sure there'll probably be better offers on the table if I'm the Trailblazer and we had to trade Dame than the Minnesota Timberwolves can give us. Alec Burks. That's so random. Oh my God, that's so random. Give me the reasoning. Finding a plug and play two-way wing. Um, since modern teams haven't had enough of this archetype, veteran Alec Burks will be plenty. Okay, sure. All right, I'm cool with that. There, yep, this is where I predicted. Donovan Mitchell, I don't need to explain it. I feel like everybody's talked there, talked about this since they got eliminated from the playoffs. The idea of Donovan Mitchell um, getting traded to the New York Knicks. It will be basically the best guard they've had in so very long. Um, and I think it'll be cool to see him in the garden. I'm not trying to take him away from Utah Jazz fans, but I think it'll be cool to see him in the garden, bro. Legit. I think he fits the garden vibes. He's a New York kid. They love him. And he'd be the best player since Mello, basically. Or I guess last year, Julius Randle, whatever you want to say. Draft picks. You know what? I disagree with this. I, I wholeheartedly disagree with this. You got enough. You got enough. Let's go turn them into players now. What are you going to do when you have five first-round picks in this year's draft, four first-round picks in the year after that, three in the year after that, and then four more? What? How do you How do you do anything with that? I'm team trade some of them picks away to get players that can materialize. Go, go get some people. Like... There's no way you can draft and develop that many people. It's just it literally, it's literally impossible. So no, not more draft. You know what? You know what? Actually, <laughs> everything I just said is cap. Um, the, the reason you get more draft picks is to increase your odds of you getting the first pick, right? If you have five first round picks in the 2025 draft, some of them are going to be lottery picks. And then you just got some, you got more odds, I guess. But the ones that you don't have the first overall top five pick, trade them away, man. 
Trade him away. Miles Bridges for Orlando is, I don't love it, bro. I, I would not love this. If this is how this offseason goes for him, I wouldn't necessarily love it. They just gonna have such a log jam. They got the first overall pick that might be Chet. It might be Jabari, it might be Paolo. I don't really know. I ain't been reading the tea leaves. I don't know what people are saying over there. You got John Isaac, Wendell Carter, you figure out Mo Bamba, Franz Wagner. Like there's just so much going on from the wing position already. I'm not trying to get another player into that log jam, especially when I, I believe and Franz Wagner, and every every Orlando Magic fan that I know I've talked to still believes in Jonathan Isaac as a core piece of the team. So where does Miles Bridges fit in? I I, I don't know. Bradley Beal, you, you, you just went harder. How, how do you? It's going to be like Tobias Harris and this and the Matisse Steibel. And, and then, but now what do you, you run those two, Maxi and then whoever at the four, and then Joel, or is this implying? Personally, mm, this is interesting. I, I said that I would I would trade Tyler Hero to get Beal. I don't know if I'd trade Tyrese Maxey to get Beal because of the circumstances. I wouldn't trade Tyrese Maxey to get Bradley Beal. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. And I don't think this is what they're implying. They don't even mention what the potential package could look like. Clint Capella and more. If Aiden is to move, then Phoenix needs him to exit via side and trade, sending him to Atlanta. A potential suitor, according to uh, Jake Fisher, could um, deliver both replacements of like Clint Capella and Bogdanovich or something. But I don't think this is a dream. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't look at this as the dream scenario. Uh, but I think this is a I think this is a realistic scenario. But I don't know if it's a dream. Jeremy Grant, sure. Why not? Right? Why not? You know, if if um, the Detroit Pistons see the last year of his deal. And now they got a top, I think they have the fifth overall pick and they draft somebody that's a wing. I don't know who's out there in the draft. They draft somebody to take this spot, then sure. Um, they got some of the, the other things that Jeremy Grant was looking for. He wanted a black head coach and you, you get that in, uh, in Portland. And now you play with Damian Lillard for a season. Sure. Yeah, don't give up the seventh overall pick to get Jeremy Grant. That's a, If the seventh overall pick is on the table for the Detroit Pistons, you better, you better say yes before they hang up that phone. But the Portland Trailblazers just um, signed somebody to be the assistant GM that I, that I messed with, so shout out to them. Next, a top three pick. That's the perfect trade scenario. Um, pairing De'Aaron Fox a bonus with Jabari Smith, Chet Hongo, Paolo will be a tier. Yeah, but how do you get there? How do you, how do you convince one of the top three teams to trade you their pick to move to number four unless somebody in the top three is not convinced on one of those guys and they'd rather have Jaden Ivey or they'd rather have uh, Shaden Sharp or whatever that's the only way but what are you even giving up in this other than your fourth you give up two extra picks one extra pick you give up Davion I doubt you know what I'm saying next Zach Levine for the Spurs I would agree with this I think this is their dream scenario and I think it's a possibility as, as, as hard as it is to say for me um, I think it's a real possibility that Zach Levine ends up with the San Antonio Spurs. Um, I do, I legitimately do believe that the no uh, state tax matters to a lot of people, bro. I understand. I understand why it would matter. And Texas has that. Pairing up with his homie DeJounte Murray. You know, I think it's a possibility, bro. Only thing I would hope is that it's like a little signing trade. You feel me or something? You know what I'm saying? Make it, make it work well for Chicago as well. Harrison Barnes for the Toronto Raptors. Now, this feels the opposite of what they should be doing. Low key. Um, but it's the last year of like Harrison Barnes' contract. I don't really understand that one. Wiggins? Yo. Wiggins with the Jazz will be interesting, but I don't know how you get there, but I would be very interested in seeing this fit because you know Wiggins defends. They've been looking for people on the wing to defend since I don't know how long, so I would I would like that. Wiggins and James Wiseman for Gobert. Wow, um, interesting. Malcolm Brogdon makes his second appearance. There already, I don't really have anything to say about that. Um, his second appearance ended up in Washington. I'm curious to know what y'all think though. And for your favorite team, who is the dream offseason target? You don't have to really necessarily give me an avenue of how to get there. Just let me know. Uh, don't say, like, we want Giannis, but we play for the... I'm a Wizards fan. Don't do that. But, like, you know what I'm saying? Give me your dream scenario for this offseason. I'll be in that comment section. I appreciate you watching. Peace.